Hey there, actual Republican and antithesis of punk, Johnny Ramone here, coming with you with another makeup chopping block. I've got a lot more stuff on here today. I'm not particularly feeling like I am in the filming mood, but here we are. I'm already behind on schedule with filming and everything else, so might as well get some, uh, get some stuff going on my face so I can determine whether or not I like it. Got several things in question today. Starting off, we have a trio from LA Colors with some um, blues, purples, and pinks in there. I have an obnoxiously pink liquid lipstick, an obnoxiously pink and sparkly lip gloss, a big, thick white eyeshadow pencil, an obnoxiously pink blush, a face primer, a brow mascara, a light bronzer, and an actual foundation. I'm hoping this video doesn't get ridiculously long, but there are a lot of products and you know how it goes. Weirdly sunny outside today, which means that right now you're probably being blinded. Bangs are not wanting to cooperate, so we're, uh, we're getting real physically attractive up in here. Oh yeah, bringing home that sexy bacon. My skincare has already been done like a couple hours ago, so we're weird and ready to go. I'm gonna get, oh man, I haven't used a face primer in, well, not since last decade. <laughs> and uh, I never really feel like they did anything for my skin. Like there were some nice hydrating ones, but it's like, you know, I could have gotten the same effect from using an actual moisturizer instead of just a fancy, $32 bottle of primer. This one is very heavily fragranced and it's taking me back to like those Johnson & Johnson fish shaped like after you go swimming shampoos or whatever. It's taking me back to that scent which you know I don't hate but fragrance my skin not a very good combination so yeah that sucks. All right, so it has left my skin a little bit tacky, which I believe is the point of this. Move on to foundation. This is a very thin serum foundation. It's in the shade 1.1 neutral, which I think is like one of the lightest options. There might be a 1.0 neutral or 1.0 cool or something like that. So um, we'll see if this actually fits me both in undertone and in like, you know, level of pale. <laughs> so I'm gonna score it off some onto my hand and already Nope. It's looking too dark for me. Oh boy. A very light foundation is going to make me look orange. I love this. Okay. So got a damp sponge. It's still my method, my preferred method for applying uh, liquid foundations. If you're using cream ones, I really like using um, like the stippling brushes and powder foundations. Obviously a big ass Sufi powder brush for that bitch. It feels weird not using my fingers for like a base product. I'm just gonna lightly press some over my eyelids because they're a little bit darker than the rest of my face. This actually isn't too bad of a match. It might actually make me a little too pale. I'm just kind of awkwardly peering down in the mirror, gazing at the plurality of chins that I now possess. Thank you, quarantine. Thank you, easy packaged food. This takes forever to sit there and pat your face until everything is where it's supposed to be. Anyway, so I've already celebrated the holidays this year. They're over, they're done. I already got my presents and, you know, got to talk with family and stuff like that. No, no travel plans this year, obviously, because I don't want to kill my grandmother. Really exciting gifts, and by exciting, I mean like I'm I'm an adult, and I'm not really asking for like you know a brand new car or like a shopping trip or like a fancy designer bag. I and if I ask for anything, it's always practical stuff or stuff that I actually need. And this year, oh my God, I feel like a domestic ass god. Um, my pet rabbit chewed through the charging cable for my vacuum cleaner, so. I haven't been able to vacuum since that happened. I got a replacement charging cord. Ooh, ooh, very fancy. And I've just been vacuuming up a storm. It's been so fun. I can actually like deal with my floors without actually using a broom to try to sweep them to keep them a little bit clearer of rabbit hair. So that, that was really nice. So 
Um, it was very much appreciated. I, I really liked that. That was awesome. Um, I also, unfortunately, had to say goodbye to my electric tea kettle earlier this year because it was a dollar at a thrift store and the ass fell off of it and exposed the wiring and I'm not savvy enough to actually put it back together and not have it start a house fire. So I got a new electric tea kettle and this thing is probably more high tech than my first car which is not hard because it was a very early 90s manual transmission Subaru so but this thing has so many options for different types of tea and it'll keep it warm automatically for 30 minutes afterwards and it's got lights and and it ch it chimes at you it's just very 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 intense but it's been fantastic to use in the mornings because um until I got that back, I did the very precarious, you know, boiling water in a pot and then using a um, funnel to get it into my cup because I didn't have a tea kettle. So now I feel a lot more safe. And even though I didn't actually inc incur any burns from my very safe, you know, homeowners associated approved method of making tea, I'm going to be saving myself from that in the future even more. So hooray. I think that this is a pretty decent match. Um, it's very, very lightweight and sheer, which I like. I hate the feeling of a heavy foundation. It just, it, ugh, it sits so just sludgily on my skin and I just want to rub it all off. So um, I'm barely feeling it on the skin. You can see that it has taken down the intensity of my like post acne, mark, acne marks and stuff like this. This is what I would expect my face to look like a couple of months from now. So, you know, it's not going to hide any of this. I wasn't expecting it to. I, doesn't, I don't even really want it to because it just looks funky if you have all this texture and just weird stuff over that. So, yeah, not too bad. Color isn't so bad. Um, it creased on the eyelids pretty much immediately, but that's what's to be expected. I am going to be setting it down a little bit with some loose powder because I still don't want it going everywhere and I don't want the powder products that I'm going to be putting on my face later to be sticking to um, areas that I don't want it to be sticking to. So, I've got a bit of loose powder on the brush here. I'm going to just kind of like lightly, lightly press that into the skin. Just a nice gentle rolling method. Don't want to buff it or move anything around too much. It's like I said, just a thin foundation and I don't want to move it around. I powder my eyebrow, my eyelids a little bit. Get under the eyes. I think we're gonna forego the um, concealer today just cause I have a little bit of coverage under my eyes as it is. And all these colors and especially the white eyeshadow stick is making me want to go a little bit nuts with coloring, so it won't really matter if my under eyes are dark, because they're probably not going to be visible. I need the excess off so I don't look or feel too powdery, because being overpowdered is just as bad, if not maybe worse than having a powdery, not powdery, but a heavy foundation on my skin. Ta-da! I look so beige. It's weird seeing a lot of my like natural discoloration blocked out a little bit. I'm just like, oh, it's so uncanny valley. <laughs> I look like a thumb. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. If I was a smart person, I would have done my eye stuff beforehand because I don't remember if this stuff has fallout or not. But hey, hey, <sighs> we're just gonna, we're gonna figure it out as we go. So I know that this is going to crease on my eyes like a motherfucker as soon as I do it. So gonna stand by with a little bit of powder on the brush to lock that mofo down. Uh, I think I'm gonna go pretty pretty heavy with this. I kind of want to do more of like a an innocent almost like um what are I oh I almost poked myself in the other but like I kind of want to go for a lighter almost iconographic like light area for the eyes. Just make it look kind of surreal and just kind of special. Gosh, this stuff is like, it, I know that it's emollient, but it's so
such a pain to put on my eye because my eyelids are a little bit stretchy. Ugh, it's just hard getting a good layer there and I'm not looking for full opacity from everything. I just want to get a good portion on that I can shear it out and then not have to worry about going in with the second layer. So I'm hoping that this will this will do. I'm also going to take it under the eyes as well. Yeah, we're going to get a little weird today. You can automatically see all of my texture underneath my eyes now. It helped if I actually drank a reasonable amount of water, but now I uh, subsist almost basically off of coffee. Speaking of which, how fabulous is this mug? It was a dollar. Always check your local thrift stores, kids. You'll find some fucking bangers. Got that. I want to start blending it out a little bit because I don't want all those harsh edges. I know. It was such an attractive look. It was so nice. But we are going to be sharing this stuff out. I kind of want to go for an overly frosted, almost kind of a, a lovely Y2K look. You know, back when everyone was so hopeful about the future and they're just like, oh my god, the 2000s are going to be the best thing ever. <sighs> Dumb assholes didn't know it was going to hit them. So I want to go for that like super, super pastel, super kind of frosty, way too way too light in the eyeshadow kind of kind of vibe. I want to be confused as like a potential space babe, you know? Intergalactic sensuous being. Oh man, it's just looking it's making everything look super dry. I hate that. I mean, I'm just facing reality, but I still can hate it, right? These chubby eye pencils used to be like the shit when I started getting into um, like the the YouTube side of makeup back in like 2000, 2008, 2009, something like that. And then I finally got my hands on some when I found out that um, Bartell Drugs up in Washington, or maybe just exclusively Seattle area, I don't know, was carrying some. So when I went on a trip up there, I saw some and I freaked out and I, Bought some of the chubby sticks, I bought some of their old single eyeshadows, which used to be so many fun colors, but they've since like focused on putting out 17 million different types of mascara and a whole bunch of the same shit just packaged differently. Like I, I hate what NYX has turned into now. But way, way back in the day, they were bringing color and, and, and brightness and everything to um, the drugstore if you're lucky to be in an area that actually sold it at the drugstore. and. They were very revolutionary and now I'm just like, oh my god, seriously? More shitty eyeshadow? Their eyeshadow um, formula has not been the same since and I am pissed off. Actually, because this shit is so dry, I don't think I'm going to set it because it's not going to have any stick for these colors. Um, my chief complaint with these fuckers is that uh, when you see them on the shelf, they look so nice. They look so lovely and shimmery, but that shimmer is an overspray. Underneath is like maybe a shimmery shade, but mostly matte. So let's give these suckers a little bit of a swatch. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, there's a little bit of shimmer to them. I want to lean really heavily on this blue kind of lilac shade. Um, this guy over here just straight up looks kind of like a bruise, which not bad, but not what I really want to go for right now. And this guy in the center, it'll, it'll do, it'll pass. Eh. <laughs> wow, <laughs> sturdy. Let's just mess around before anything else breaks. Let's see, what do I want to use? What do I want to do? I'm gonna get this like all over. I'm gonna start at the lash line, build it up there, and then just like whisk it around all over the place. So it can feel kind of like cosmic butterflies. And even with the, the assist of the white base, I just kind of look mad about this color. It's pretty lackluster. It's honestly a little bit more dusky than I would have preferred. It's also very, very powdery. So, yeah, Not feeling it. I think my mind was pretty much made up as soon as I realized that it was an overspray, not actual shimmer. But, you know, I just wanted to give it the good old college try, which for me is, you know, going there, 
attempting the same classes over and over to get a better grade because you have this inner sense of perfection and then ending up having it trash your mental health and dropping out. It's just such an easy process, you know? It's uh, time proven. This stuff is really showing me where my eczema is coming out right underneath the brows for winter time. Time to start beefing up my, uh, my moisturization routine. All right, let's get some of this going on the lower lash line as well. Oh, you know, I want to do the thing like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a wonderful pastel intergalactic fairy, you know, it's going to be fabulous. And I'm just like, Ugh, I'm going to be a depressed pastel goth. It'll be okay. I think I'm going to save a little bit of the overspray to highlight the inner corners because otherwise it's just this one kind of flat, multi-dimensional, boring shade. It's a lovely lavender. There's just not enough body. Hella cool Christmas present. Number three was a toaster oven. And I love toaster ovens because I don't have to lean down to get things out of them. <laughs> but also like, you know, I grew up using a toaster oven. Um, and so I'm really familiar with them. And I'm kind of like a whiz with making excellent cheese toast in those. Um, and also it uses about 50% of the amount of power uh, than my traditional huge oven does. I don't know why they put such a big oven in such a tiny kitchen. Like it's an apartment for Christ's sake, put a small one in there. But like, oh, I use my oven so much cause I don't have a microwave. And I'm just like, ugh, oh, this is killing me financially. Not really, but also kind of really. So now I have one of those and I've, you know, broken in. It's got this fancy, easy access hatch and everything like that. And now I feel fabulous and energy saving. I'm definitely feeling very like Y2K right now. Almost kind of tricksy tang, but without the eyeliner and you know, the massive amount of money. I'm not particularly excited by either of these other two shades over here. I should use them. Will I? I don't know. There's not a rule that says I have to. Let's go in with some of that glittery overspray, which tricked me into thinking that this was going to be a lovely baby blue shade when it in fact is a purple with some slight iridescence. And just pack that bitch right on there. I think I want to put a little bit in the center of the lid too, just to give a little bit more dimension, but I think I'm going to go with the, maybe the darker purple overspray. Who knows? We'll see. It's kind of a, a one shot thing because I only have very limited amounts of overspray. And even then they don't really pop up that much. Pray for me. Oh God. It's just picking up so much of the pigment underneath. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Uh, actually, maybe let's put some of this shimmer and darker shade on the outsides here just to kind of open or, you know, give the eyes a little bit more defined. Ah, it just makes my eyes look sadder and more downturned. Oh, well, I tried. Let's do the other thing on the other side and hopefully it doesn't come out as bad. You can definitely tell that this look has not been planned, can't you? Some of the, uh... Some of the put uh, little packets of these um, ambiguous products, I definitely paced together with an idea in mind. And this one was just kind of like, well, these are all things that I generally don't wear. Let's see if it, we can make it work. And so far, no. Let's finish up the face. I'm going to start by bronzing, which was very, very popular when I was a young person. Uh, we didn't do contouring. We didn't do baking we just put bronzer most of the time very shimmery all over our face and this is actually a very subtle nice color like dang it smells like copper tone like absolute a mess of it which i don't like but it's very it's very subtle it just brings a little bit of warmth to the face which honestly is what bronzer is supposed to do it's not supposed to be this magical contouring thing it's supposed to be like oh i got a bit of kiss of the sun when i was in the south of france because my name is coco chanel nazi sympathizer but fashion icon and i 
turned tanning, which used to be a mark of the poor, the working class, into a whole thing. True story. All of it. And I'm just really piling this up on here. I'm just like getting back into the groove of this. I'm like, yes! Senior year of high school! Bronze that bitch! Bronze that bitch! Oh man. This is actually making me feel a little bit better. Like today's just been kind of crappy. I've been feeling really low energy, but I'm having fun now, even though my little hair doodle is planning to wreck me. All right, I'm just gonna put some more on the forehead over here, brag it actually down to the forehead, and just keep going. Just buff it everywhere. I haven't been sitting inside for nine months. What are you talking about? I've been outside socializing with the sun. Most importantly, you really gotta do your nose with bronzer, otherwise you look like a ding dong. I just got this weird white bitty face. What? And why not the chin? I do have quite the chin. You know, I didn't like my chin when I was growing up, but then I had an orthodontist who was also a uh, maxillofacial plastic surgery surgeon told tell me, oh, you know, when we do that, we can just, you know, go in and shave a few millimeters off your chin. And I was like, bitch, what? Now I defiantly love it. So like, fuck you in particular, Mr. Man. And to convince myself a little bit more, I'm gonna put a little bit of bronzer on my ear. Now moving on to this loud blush. I've been a big fan of vivid blushes this year, but this color not so much. Basically anything that is in the remote ballpark as Barbie pink, I'm just like, Bleh! I don't know why it is. I got nothing against Barbie. I got nothing against pink, just not on me, but I'm just like, yeah, keep it away. Because it is so vivid, I'm going to use a very fluffy, very loose brush to just kind of pick some of this stuff up. Just kiss it around there a little bit. And then, let's see. <sighs> what do I want to do? Do I want to like follow this whole like, oh my God, it's almost the new millennium thing and just do my cheeks like we would do back then? Or, oh, I'm just gonna start wafting it on and we'll go from there. Okay, it's a very, very light kiss when I do this which is to be expected, which is what I wanted, but let's actually like amp this stuff up a little bit more. Basically, I wanna feel like I've been to a sleepover with all my gal pals and it's like 2002 and we're doing each other's makeup and we're talking about which one of the guys in our 60 person class is the cutest or blah, blah, blah. Oh, makes me feel so nostalgic for being a child. I don't think I'm gonna keep this blush because I don't particularly enjoy it on me. I also feel like I have plenty of eyeshadows that are similar enough to this that in a pinch, if I ever wanted to go back to it, I have that option. But I don't see the point of keeping this guy around if I'm only going to ever occasionally, occasionally bust him out. Oh, uh, let's just follow what the magazines are saying. Once you're done with your blush, put it in your T-zone and on your chin for a well put together look. Ta-da! I hate liquid lipsticks. <laughs> this formula in particular, it's relatively comfortable, but the moment you rub your lips together, even after it's been dry for a while, it just crumbles into nothingness. So I don't want to put it on my lips. Instead, I've got some on my hand already because I am going to be doing some little freckles. Because why the hell not? Why the hell not? I've got a little tiny brush over here. And the foundation's actually held up pretty well, which is nice. I'm going to keep that guy on. I don't want it to be super powerful, so once I put one down, I just kind of blot it with my finger. I've actually got quite a few freckles, but this year they didn't come out with as much of a vengeance because I spent the entire year inside and very little exposure to sun means very, very faint freckles. So let's summon these bitches on back. Why the heck not? Got some over here. Oh, that's gonna be a big boy. Okay, 
which I know that if I do this, I can kind of add some to another side by just pressing and transferring gently. Huh, that will expedite the process. Very cool. So I kind of want to make these guys look a little bit less crazy. I mean, it's starting to look kind of like acne, but you know what? It's fine. I am going to look excellent. Now, finding alternate uses for products that don't particularly work for me is a bit of a passion project for me because, like, A, I feel bad because I wasted money on a product that I don't like, but B, there's the whole, like, consumerism issue and, like, not buying things that you don't need or, you know, not doing enough research and so I just feel bad about it and so... I've been trying really hard to rethink things in a better light or in a different light, which creates some fun uh, experiences like this one. Having a variance in size makes your totally naturally colored um, you know, pimple freckles look a little more natural. Are they real? Or is it some shitty $1 liquid lipstick? You never know. Looking cute, feeling cute. Let's put on a little bit of lip gloss to really solidify in that Y2K late 90s, early 2000s aesthetic. It's so glittery. It's got some pretty decent pigment to it. But this is just not at all that I look for in a lip gloss. Oh, the scent is kind of offensive. <laughs> it's very, very sweet smelling. There's a little bit of a residual taste, but nothing too bad. But just, <sighs> it's not it, dog. Like this, this color is not what I want out of a gloss. It does match the freckles pretty well though, so that's pretty cool. To pull everything together, let's try this eyebrow gel. Let's go with fluffy little eyebrows because back in 2002, which is where I, I'm pretending I'm from right now, I didn't really have access to tweezers for that and I think the first time I ever had my eyebrows touched by someone to tweeze them, which was a friend in like the back of the reading nook in our class, but whatever. Um, it had to have been 2003, maybe 2004. So I was all eyebrows back in the day. Oh no, I keep fucking up. Okay, so what I like in an eyebrow gel is not a whole lot of color deposit because I've already got dark brows. I mean, obviously it's nice to have a little bit of a freshen up, but this stuff has just so much pigment and color in it. So like when I'm you know, going through my brows and brushing things up, it's depositing a lot, um, which is, you know, a bit messy. Don't like it that much. Um, it's also feeling like a little bit heavy and gelish, which I remember liking this way back in the day when I first bought it, but that's only because I used to like the Benefit Gimme Brown. That was the only fiberized brow gel on the market and now things have changed for the better. Let's get some shitty clumpy lashes. Oddly enough, I don't think I've ever owned the Maybelline Great Lash, you know, the iconic drugstore staple that literally everyone and their mother has used at one point in their life. But I remember how clumpy all the girls in my school that used to use that, I remember how clumpy their lashes were. So I've got this very clumpy, ooey gooey, kind of punky mascara over here and we're gonna give that a a nice little glop on there going for authenticity folks let's take the hair down and let's see how we feel mm, I kind of look like a little doll I like this it's actually you know this look turned out okay I appreciate this do I appreciate all the products? No. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. So this guy, unfortunately, is getting the chopping block. I may depot this lilac because over the white base, 
it, it is nice. It is it is lovely. I'm on, I'm on a bit of a purple eyeshadow kick. I don't like this. <laughs> it didn't work on me back in the day, but everyone thought it was so great, so I went along with the crowns back then, but now I'm just like, no. It's simultaneously too dry, but it never dried down. It's just, it's not worth the effort for me, really. So that one's going goodbye. Like I said, if I want a bright pink uh, blush once again, I have plenty in my collection to do that with. While this is fun to put on my face as freckles, eh, it's just, no. <laughs> the formula doesn't really work on my lips very much and I'm not a huge fan of the color, so goodbye. I was quite surprised by this bronzer. I am going to keep it, but when I initially swatched it, I was just like, this is just a golden highlight, but it actually looks pretty good on my skin, so. It survived. This foundation is relatively new. It actually works fairly well. I'm not really expecting to wear foundation that much in the future, but it is an option. And um, I think I'm going to keep this as well because it, you know, I felt like it had a little bit of extra stick, which probably helped things stay on. So why not? We'll give that a try. We'll let that live on. And if it ends up being crappy, I'll get rid of it. This lip gloss is like you know, the shine's great. I don't like the scent. The more I look at it, the more I'm liking it. But this is just not a shade that I'm going to grab for time after time. So I'm going to be getting rid of this as well. This guy, not really a big fan of. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of hold to the brows. The depositing of the extra pigment on the skin isn't that great. And it just, it feels dry and funky and weird. Like, uh, just... Five years ago, yeah, I could see how I like this, but me currently now, nah fam, no. Well, that significantly lightened the load. I'm pretty pleased with the results there. Um, I was surprised because I thought for real that this was gonna be a shoe in as well as this and this, cause I was like, there's no way that this matches my skin tone. Surprise, it's not that bad. <laughs> Or at least I hope it isn't. We'll see when I get to editing. And with that, I'm going to go take my disco doll ass and enjoy a lovely day of sitting on my couch and drinking coffee and watching my plants photosynthesize. Goodbye. This is Space Guy blasting off.